What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you the build that I'm gonna be playing for the gauntlet tomorrow. I do have to work all day, so when I get home, I'm gonna be straight up blasting. So I did everything over the weekend to get ready to kind of punch the gauntlet in the face. So I am playing Arclash. Now, I do kind of wanna showcase just, uh, there goes my, my tier list, but I did have my Arclash build Okay, I had an arc lash build that I had been playing. Where is it? Basic attack, arc lash, arc lash sorcerer. And I thought that this build was really, really fast. And it is not. My chat goes, War, you can get the build so much faster. And I said, well, how? How do I get the build so much faster? Uh, we added a lot of abilities here, swapped out a lot of things. And all of this is going to be fully credited to my boy Rob. My chat said Rob had a version for Arclash that just makes you teleport almost infinitely. So I checked it out. We took some ideas from that and we just put it in here. So big shout out to my community. Big shout out to the god Rob uh, for just kind of helping get the infinite teleport to Arclash. So this is the build that I'm going to be playing tomorrow. I'm going to go over everything that I have, some variants, some stuff that you can swap out, the skills, Paragon, all that good stuff. So let's dive right in. So let's get into the skills, guys. This is an Arclash build, and as always, when we get to the end, I will be showcasing it in a T100. Although, you know what I will do? I'm going to do a T70 just to show you how it's going to be in a T70. But I'm going to tell you right now that this build absolutely slaps even in a T100. You don't do well against bosses in T100. You would have to change some things. But as far as for the gauntlet for T70, this build slaps. So we're maxing out Arclash here. Max it out, okay? And we're going into glinting for the uh, hitting a stunned enemy reduces our cooldowns. By reducing our cooldowns with the teleport enchantment, we are going to be able to teleport. It's going to be insane. I'll explain. Uh, next, we have fireball into destructive fireball. The reason that we have fireball is because it is going to be our second enchantment slot. Through the gauntlet, we're just going to be blowing up absolutely everything as we kill them. Next, we're coming down. We're getting Flame Shield into Enhanced Flame Shield for even more move speed. You don't need either one of these. We max Teleport into Shimmering for more defense. Okay. One point into Elemental Attunement for reset. Max out Glass Cannon for damage. Then we're going to come down and we're going to max out Conjuration Mastery for even more damage. We're going to be putting points into Lightning Spear for the stun and the vulnerability here. Uh, however, you do have three points from this. So if you wanted to put three points out of there, or excuse me, two points from this, you could put two points into something else. For example, we could go put it into here if you really wanted to for a 15% chance to reset. I kind of dig that. This just helps with a little bit of damage. We are doing one point into align the elements for DR as well as three points into protection because we need the barrier for sure. Now, again, guys, for the gauntlet, it's only T70. So really... We don't even need the extra DR. We're just going to be slapping absolutely everything. Then we're going to come down. You could also put these points too if you didn't want. You could also put these points into precision for lucky hit chance. I get you. Like that, that would be fine too because in our gear pieces here, we do have some lucky hit chance stuff. But in reality, you don't really need that. I'm just going to leave it on my main here and just max out this. But you know what? Let's let's get the better re. Let's get the better reset. Then we're going to come down. We are going to be putting points into Inner Flames as well as Devouring Blaze for more crit damage. Uh, you're going to ask, like, well, how do we get this? I'll explain how to make sure that we're doing burning damage. Um, then we're doing one point into Static Discharge as well as Shocking Impact. Now, as of tomorrow, this is the day before the Gauntlet goes live, Shocking Impact did get a huge buff. Okay, it's buffed by 30%. So we're going to be doing even more damage here, which is why whenever we stun, which is going to be nonstop, we're going to be doing way more damage. We max Ball Lightning into Wizard's Ball for Crackling Energy. You're going to ask why we max Ball Lightning. I'll explain when we get to the gear. Then we're um, doing all three points into Unstable Currents. And then our key passive is going to be Esus because this still affects all damage, not just fire. Okay, so this is going to affect both Chris Strike Damage and Chris Strike Chance for all of our Lightning Skills, Frost Skills, etc. All right, so there goes our skills. Again, Fireball and Teleport are going to be our enchantments. Uh, let's go over to the gear, which is probably one of the most important parts. Because it's a T70, we don't really need much more armor than 6,000 at all. 
our reses are maxed here and this is even over cap to 75 almost so you're going to get that naturally playing a sork but you don't really need that crazy defenses so we're going into shaco here the biggest reason that we're doing shaco is the cooldown in dr but more importantly the ranks to all skills so you see that we have ice blades here on my skill tree um or my my skill bar we don't actually have points into it that's why i was saying like if you don't want to rock this you could put points into here um you could try to extend the summon ice place to get even more damage reduction when you summon these you could do this right and then we're gonna have to find another point that we would have to put somewhere i ended up taking a point i think out of fireball just as an overall damage number if you really wanted to add this in here because 20% of an Ice Blade's uh, cooldown reduction is applied to other skills. So if you really wanted to try like this, you're more than welcome to. Uh, so Shaco is the reason that we have that. If you don't rock Shaco, then you're going to have to put at least one point into Ice Blades. Next, of course, we're doing Raiment. We're going to be teleporting non-stop. So we're going to be getting the pull and we're going to be stunning pretty much the entire time. So... This is required for the build. If you do not have raiments, you the build is going to suffer a lot more. Uh, now, we have Pain Gorgers in here. So, Pain Gorgers is a slot that we are going to be... This is your flex slot. So, if we go over to the, uh, the Diablo 4, not the Gauntlet, but the... Uh, if we go over to the patch notes, guys, I want to show you guys they did. We're adding two vampiric powers, and we're going to be end up. We're going to be. We're going to end up using one of them. So you have two options here. Hectic is the first option. This is the one that you're going to want to get. For every five basic skills you cast, your active cooldowns are reduced by two to four seconds. If you get the four seconds, it applies to teleport enchant on your evade, which is why we're going to be able to teleport even faster with Hectic. You also have the Moonrise here. Now, a few things with Moonrise, if you do want to use this. Damaging an enemy with basic skill, which you will be doing, will give you up to 20% attack speed, which is great. And then once you hit max stacks, you enter a Blood Rage. You gain increased basic skill damage, which is fine. The movement speed for 10 seconds isn't going to matter because you're going to be teleporting. But this is an option, but the best option is going to be Hectic. So we would be putting Hectic here. Uh, so we will be using Pain Gorgers until we get it. Now, regular gloves, you are going to be looking for um, intelligence, attack speed, regular crit, and then crit str strike chance against injured enemies. I'm still re-rolling these gloves, so I'm hoping to get one. Uh, so that's the option at gloves. Tabalt's will in the pants is perfectly fine. Even more damage, you gain the resource even though it doesn't matter. Now, flicker steps. This is the next big one. This is where the build is still going to be... Flicker Steps and Raiment are 100% required for the build. Now, Flicker Steps has a few things here and is the main piece. So, each time you evade through an enemy, you get the cooldown by 4 seconds. Now, when we evade with Unstable Currents, you're going to see that it is going to reduce our cooldown. Right? Every single time we evade and we teleport in, our Raiment is going to pull all the enemies in and that counts as us evading through them, okay? So let's go ahead and move over here before my uh, companion here just destroys everything. So that's the first reason. The next reason and the most important part is the static ability on Flicker Step. Attacks reduce evades cooldown by 1.2 seconds. So when you look at evade, whenever I make a normal attack, my evade cooldown is just getting reset. Okay, we're, we're reducing it by the second each time. So this is why we are going to be able to reset our cooldown on teleport or our evade teleport so much. So when we get into the showcase, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Uh, in our blade or our dagger, we're having accelerating. We're going to be increasing our attack speed. This build needs m as much attack speed as possible with our regular attacks to reset our cooldown. Okay. Okay. Now, you're probably asking, well, War, you're not using a core skill. So this is how we get the critical strike chance from this. When we activate Unstable Currents, we're going to get a random core, Conjuration, or Mastery. So our core skills are going to be sh uh, Shock Bolts, or, or, or Charge Bolt, excuse me, and Chain Lightning. So whenever one of those... Uh, whenever one of those skills crit, we're going to get the increased attack speed, which is huge. 
Uh, in our offhand, we're doing rapid. I don't have a max one here, so I am losing 10% uh, attack speed. But basic skills, pretty self-explanatory. Basic skills, which is going to be our arc lash, is going to get an increased attack speed. We got Tal Rashes for cooldown and damage. We are doing a gravitational here. Ball lightnings orbit around you and deal increased damage. Again, we're going to get ball lightnings from unstable currents. I'm telling you in this build, we will have 100% uptime on unstable currents. So we should always have ball lightnings. We should always have chain lightnings, etc. Uh, in our amulet, we're doing ancient flame, a max roll here for 75% increased attack speed when both of our SU ferocity key passives are active. Now, again, if you don't remember, our critical strike damage is increased against enemies above 50% life and our crit chance is uh, increased against enemies below. Critical strikes that kill or hit kill enemies or hit a boss grant both for three seconds we are going to be getting this all the time it's going to be pretty easy to trigger this no problem okay so that is the gear pieces guys we are doing uh rubies and then emeralds as well as um diamonds in here for the all reses with one poison node just to max that out our center shell we got adrenaline with tactical duration and genesis if you do not have Genesis, you can put in a different uh, support one. I would recommend like Safeguard or you could do Fortify if you want some more Fortify. Then we have Tempest with Burning, Efficiency, and Evernight. So Burning is what's going to allow us to get our Burning triggers here for a Devouring Blaze. This is where we're going to get the additional Burning damage. For those that do not know, Fireball does not make enemies burn. I repeat, it does not make enemies burn, okay? So the only way that we can get enemies burned to trigger our Devouring Blaze is with the burning support from Tempest in our Seneschal, all right? Because we are not using Firebolt Enchant. Uh, efficiency, of course, for crit, and then Evernight. If you do not have Evernight, you can go in and use, I don't know, Frigid. You could do Breaking, actually. Uh, where's Breaking? Breaking would be really, really good uh, for the, yeah, breaking to cause enemies to be vulnerable. So I would put this one in if you do not have Evernight. All right, into the Paragon board. The Paragon board, as along with the entire guide, will be down in the description below. So I'm going to go over my glyphs. We do have seven of them. We got Adept. We have Charged. We're rocking Destruction for more damage. Adept for more Mastery Skill Increase and damage charge for even more damage when we pick up crackling energy which is going to be all the time 15 percent multiplicative uh damage is insane we're doing elementalist for a resist and damage then we have enchanter for even more damage and resist exploit for even more damage against vulnerability and then territorial because we're going to be up close and personal so i get a lot of comments about people wanting me to pause on each of these things and go over it individually just go look at the guide click it down in the description below i'm not going to go in crazy detail over this it just takes too long and the videos for these are already long enough so just go down there and deal with it okay uh but our i will highlight the legendary notes so enchantment master here enchantments are 20 percent stronger so this includes our teleport and fireball all right of course we're also doing frigid fate with a maximum vulnerability damage multiplier and then I believe that's the only other one that I'm actually doing. Yes. So I'm doing those two legendary nodes just for the Paragon board. So let's go and do a T70. I think I have one. We got Claps Vault. So I'm going to do a T70 to showcase how the build will be if you're doing the Gauntlet tomorrow. Because this is the day before uh, the Gauntlet goes live at the day of recording. Okay. So how this build works is it's pretty easy. It took me a while playing it through the weekend to try to understand how to move okay i hate that storm Bane's wrath is here now you cannot use your mouse button or a force move button like i have which is space bar to move because you cannot attack and you cannot move at the same time now i'm force move okay but if i force move first and then i attack i stand still this build the only way that we move is with teleport and chant and regular teleport so how this build works is, is we're going to smash all of our buttons. We are going to hold Arc Lash the entire time. All we're going to do is hold it. Because we're going to attack every single time when we're done teleporting. And then we are just going to spam teleport. So let's go through. I'll show you exactly how this is going to work. We're just going to spam everything. Right? Get it all going. 
And that's it. Protection Shrine, right? And all you're gonna do is just spam teleport. That's it. You can get this so much faster. Again, you are gonna have 100% uptime. Oh, I gotta kill every. Make sure I kill everything. Did I kill everything? Yeah, all the monsters are dead. Sweet. You should have 100% uptime on everything. Now, in these situations where like you're in between, like you're just smashing. I think I gotta pick that up, don't I? I gotta pick that up. Let's grab that. Okay. Now, if you need to, like, move just to kind of get through it, that's fine. You should have no issues. You're just going to be constantly teleporting. Make sure you're just smashing all your buttons, okay? And you're just going to speed through. That's an event. We don't care. You're literally just going to speed through everything. Oh, I got two here. Hey, we placed one. Nice. You should have 100% uptime on everything. Get away for the double explosions to go away. Let's grab this last one. You see the build is just it's just very easy to play. You're just you're just infinitely teleporting. And then when it comes to the boss, we're just going to kill the boss super easy. Again, when it comes to T70, it will take another second or two probably to kill the boss. Like in that right there, it's just a few seconds, but it's not bad at all. And you're just going to go through it and just completely dominate. The build is is just insane, guys. It's, it's crazy nuts. This is by far my favorite build in all of Diablo. The only thing that I will be working on is that after I do the gauntlet, I will be coming back to the Paragon board as well as like you know, my skill tree here and just trying to make it strong enough to kill like bosses fast enough on T100 because this can farm T100 vaults. It can farm T100 nightmare dungeons. No problem whatsoever. So I want to adjust it for a little bit more damage and more armor just to make T100s uh, bosses a little bit more viable. But this build is going to absolutely slap in the gauntlet. This is what I'm playing. Um, I want to test out Fireball and some other stuff. We have a 1,000 intelligence. The build is just nuts. So, again, guys, like the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you're going to rock this. Have fun in the gauntlet. Come back and comment in the Discord. Check it all out. Let me know your postings and what you're, where you're going to be ranked at. Post it all in there. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. And, as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.